So this is the end goal of what we're going to be making today. Um, as you can see, I just have this curve object here and wherever I move the points, the objects will flow through it with a constant velocity and scale down at the start and the end of the curve. They have all these parameters here in the modifier, like uh, this spread, for example, can sort of controls how far away from the curve we go. We can also use the curve radius to control this so we can have it vary along the length of the curve. We can control obviously all the speeds that we want things to flow at, um, the rotation speeds, the scale of the instances here, what we instance on it, how many points we have. We're going to look at breaking this down into various steps inside of geometry nodes here. So the first sort of steps we're going to be looking at is using this sample curve node to grab essentially a position point along the curve for each particle and then we're going to look at taking those particles and offsetting them randomly from the curve using the curve radius as well there. Um, and to get the curve radius, we're actually going to have to pass some attributes through the sample curve node, which is a really useful technique. And then we're going to be scaling down the beginning and the end here. And then we're going to do some instancing and that's essentially it. So just starting off in a blank file here, I'm going to delete everything and add in our Bezier curve. Then I'm going to open up a window for geometry nodes here, make it nice and big. And I'm just going to scale up this curve a little bit and give it a bit of rotation and then add in a geometry nodes modifier. Now, the main node that we're going to be using today is the sample curve node. And this node is really useful. I'll show you what it does now. But we essentially can just plug a curve into it. And then if I just set the position of a single point here, um, just using a points node and a set position here, I can plug the position into the position. And if I view the output here, you can see we get one point. And as I increase this factor value on the sample curve, you can see it flows from the start to the end of the curve. Now we can't see the curve at the minute, so I just want to duplicate up this group input and just join it at the end there. You can add in a join geometry manually, but I have the node wrangler enabled, so I can just um, control shift right click drag between two nodes to join them. This is essentially the basis for what we want to do with our particles. We just want to do this lots of times. So if I increase the number of points here to something higher, you can see it still looks the same. And the reason for that is all the points are getting exactly the same position. So they're all overlapping on top of each other here. So how do we get the points to move randomly apart from one another? Well, if I just plug in a random value into this factor, you can see that does what we want essentially. And then I can add a value to it and now we can flow these particles along the curve and they're all a bit separated from each other. So we essentially want to take this factor and when it reaches one, set it back to zero so they start smoothly again from the beginning. So to do this, we will use a fraction node and plug in our random value into here and plug that into the factor. Now, nothing will happen at the minute because nothing is moving. So we need to add in some motion. And to do that, I'm just going to use an add node after the random. I'm going to plug this into the bottom input and then I'm just going to grab a scene time node and plug in the seconds to the top. Now if I play this through, you can see we get our particles flowing from the start to the end and then looping back around again. Now if we want to control the speed, we're going to need to add a multiply node after the seconds. And now whatever value we multiply this by will essentially be our speed control. So I'm going to set this to 0.5 and I'm going to make an input for it. So I'm going to make a group input node and just drag a new slot into there and I'll call this speed. I want to offset these points randomly from the curve so that they're not all in a straight line but they have some sort of a shape like a circular profile to them. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular, I want it to be kind of random so just randomly sort of move them out. So to do this I'm going to use a random value node and I essentially want to use this random value as a vector to offset the points like this in every direction. So they all just kind of move a little bit away from the curve. So I'll just plug this into the offset and you can see we kind of get what we want, but you'll notice that everything seems to be moving up to the right and that's because we're only using positive values here. So if I decrease the minimum to minus one, the average will be at zero, which will be where they started. So we get something that follows the curve much nicer there. Now the second step here I want to do is just add in a vector math node after the random value and set it to scale. And that way we can just control the intensity of this effect. That just multiplies all these values by whatever value we have in the scale parameter. So I'm just gonna make an input for this and plug it in there. 
and I'll call this spread. And what I want to do next is essentially scale the particles so that at the beginning they're at a scale of zero, then they reach one and scale down to zero again. And to do this, I want to pass an attribute through this sample curve node because I want to scale them by the, the spline parameter. So if I just view the spline parameter on its own, you can see we get a value of zero here and one here. So this is really useful for controlling our scale because now what we can do is just add in a color ramp after this. And if I set the black value to be at zero, the white value to be at 0.5 and another black value to be at one, then essentially what we get is a value of zero here, one in the middle and zero at the end. Now the reason we don't see this at the minute is because our curve only has two points. So if I actually subdivide this curve, you can see we'd see that. But I don't want to do that because I want this to be able to work with a curve of just two points. So I'm going to add in a resample node to give our curve some more resolution. And I'll just set this to 64. The only problem is that this attribute, um, this information, this gradient gets destroyed after we sample the curve and um, because we're now just working with points essentially. So we need some sort of a way to transfer this attribute um, into our geometry stream here. So the way I'm going to do that is actually pass it through this sample curve node. This node that you pass a value through. So I'm just going to plug this into the value here. And then if I delete this viewer node, I'm going to set point radius to be this value. And you can see now things start at a scale of zero, they scale up to one and then they scale back down to zero again. This just looks a little crazy because all the points are sort of overlapping, but um, this will be fine once we instance things. You could also decrease the value of this white value. There is one more thing I want to do before we start instancing, and that is I want to be able to control the spread with the curve radius. So you can see if I add in another point to this curve by subdividing it and go into the end menu, we have this radius attribute and I want to be able to increase this to increase the spread. So what I'm going to do is I need to scale this random value by the radius here. But nothing will work because this value will be set to zero because once again we lose it after we sample the curve here. So we need to essentially pass another value through this sample curve node. But we've already passed one for our scale, so how are we going to pass another? Well, there's a little trick that is very useful to know and that is we can actually pass a vector through here. And the way I want you to think about a vector here is just three numbers essentially. So if I had a combine XYZ node, you can see we could pass the X and Y and Z through here and then separate it out on the other end like this and then we could essentially pass whatever numbers we wanted to we could pass three at a time through one vector value so that's all I'm going to do I'm just going to plug this into the Y value I'm going to plug in the radius here into the X value and then plug this into the value here and then if I separate this back out X is our radius so I will replace our scale with y and then use x in this scale parameter here. Now if I use alt s on a handle I can control the spread. Now we have this, there is one problem you might notice and that's as we make the curve longer our particles seem to get faster and that's just the nature of how this factor value works here because the, fa the factor is always 0 to 1 no matter the length of the curve. It will mean that we essentially, our particles will move faster to travel the longer distance in the same time. So what we want to do instead is use the curve length. If we plug the fraction in here, you see it stops after one meter. So that's not what we want. We want to essentially fraction this or um, make this repeat after one full length curve. So to do this, I'm gonna use the modulo function. I'll just use the truncated function, that's fine. And I am going to get the curve length. Now. To get the curve length, we have a parameter here, curve length. I'll just plug this in. And you can see now our points will travel the full length of the curve. We just need to turn the speed way up. You can see our points now travel the full length of the curve, but they don't get distributed evenly along it. That's just because our random value needs to be also set to the length of the curve as a maximum. And you can see that works a lot nicer here. I'm also going to plug in this seed as an input so I can change the distribution. 
And now I'm ready to start instancing on these points, which is essentially our final step here. So I'm just going to add an instance on points node. And for our instance, I want to make this an object. So I'm going to add in an object info node. And then I'll plug this geometry into the instance. And then for our object, I'm going to make this an input. So just add a group input, drag the, the object into there. Now we're able to select an object in our scene. So I'm going to make an object. Um, I actually just drew up this leaf in Krita. So I'm going to use that. Use this as our instance here. And you'll see a problem is all the instances are rotated the same way. And we've also lost that scaling that we added. So back in geometry nodes, there's really simple solutions to both these problems. And we're just going to plug stuff into the rotation and the scale input on this node. So for the scale, I'm going to use radius. And this is our, going to be our point radius that we set earlier. So we set the point radius over here, and then we're just reading it here and applying it to our instances. Now they seem to be getting shrunk in the middle. So I'll set this value back to one actually. And I also don't like the fall off we're getting. And that's just because of how this color ramp is. Um, so we could change this color ramp here actually and just add in another white value closer to the end. And now we get a much sharper fall off at the end. I also want to add in some randomness to this scale. So I'm going to multiply this by a random value. And I want the minimum scale to be something like 0.8 and the max to be 1.2. So we just get a little bit of randomness there. And then I'm going to multiply this by another value that I want to be able to input. So I'll just input a value here, set this to one, and this will just be our scale value essentially. I'll set the default to be one too. Now in terms of our rotation, all I'm going to do is just add in a random value node, set it to vector because rotation is three dimensional. And then for our maximum value, I want to set it to 360 degrees, but because we're in node form, 360 degrees, um, we can't input that. Everything's inputted in radians, which is just another measure of rotation. So in radians, 360 degrees is 2 times pi. So I'm just going to type that in there. Approximately 6.2. So I'll plug that into rotation. You see now everything has a random rotation. But we want this to animate as they flow along. So I'm just going to add in a vector math node. Set this to add, and we're just going to add in seconds. So now they just rotate as they go. And you might want to add in another multiply node here and another group input and call this rotation speed. Now you can control how fast they spin. One parameter I actually forgot to add was this count input here for the number of points we want, which is very important. So I'll just add in a group input, plug the count in, and just drag this up to the top. So that's essentially it. The only other things that I did here were actually in the shader on the instance. And I just uh, randomized the color a bit using the object info node here and using the random value with a mixed color. And I actually set this to color and I just used the random value to make some of them a little bit more red than others. Something like this. And now you can just sort of play with the shape of your curve, get something nice and render it out.